disappointing to me because I was hoping that new digital camera would make me look more handsome. But <laughs> not going to happen, I understand. <clears throat> so we're working on that. If you are out there in the internet land, uh, this is not the new improved camera this morning in the sound. We're sorry about that. 
This week, we have some birthdays. <clears throat> Jan Stoner. Uh, on Thursday, on uh, Thanksgiving Day, Pastor Randy Peterson. And I'm getting older. <laughs> we'll see how much. Jeremy Jr., Jeremy Walker II, has a birthday this week. And Sue White. And I'm not aware of any wedding anniversaries this week, so those are the ones I know about. Notice on your, uh, on your bulletin, on the things coming up on Wednesday, there is not a ladies' Bible study this Wednesday, but that will resume in December. And then the student ministry and the prayer meeting that go on on Wednesday nights here, we have now postponed those until January. So as you know, the students are not in school. And sort of traditionally, if we don't have students in school, we don't have student activities, so we're just going to postpone those now until January, and we'll see what goes on then. Uh, there will be a midweek connection message on Wednesday, and it looks like Miss uh, Miss Carol's going to have a wana and a devotional, but not until Friday this week. Take your Thanksgiving off, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can let you do that. <laughs> All right. Prayer requests. You've got the yellow prayer sheet. <clears throat> There's a lot of them on there. There's a couple I want to mention. Um, no last names because it's going out over the internet. But for the home folk, you'll know Chuck and Diane. Chuck and Diane this week uh, got COVID. And so Chuck is allegedly doing okay. And Diane is having a little bit more breathing issues. I want to pray for Chuck and Diane. And along that line, Della. You might recognize that name. Della has COVID. And she was in the hospital for five days and is now back in the nursing home uh, where, she, uh, where she stays. Uh, so she is recovering from that. Those are the three that I know about. Now, none of you can catch that from them. They haven't been here where you could be exposed to it. They didn't get it from us. You can't get it from them. But we do want to let you pray for them. They've given permission for their names to be shared so that we can pray for them. Um, and, and one other thing, and then we'll pray. Um, Pastor Randy said he is not shaking hands today, not even doing fist bumps, um, because we don't want to, you know, we're just being cautious. I'm trying not to do that. I might slip up and do a fist bump if you try to do one with me. But uh, please understand, we're just trying to be cautious. I use uh, hand sanitizer about 10 times while I'm here on Sunday morning. It's so thick that I don't think anything lives on there. But just in case, if I do a fist bump, you know that I'm soon sanitizing again anyway. So we're just trying to be careful. We want all of you to be careful. Uh, and again, no one here has been exposed to COVID here at the church. You couldn't have caught it here. No one here has brought it in here. So I want you to know that. Let's go ahead and, uh, and pray for all of these requests this morning. Lord, we ask you, Father, for there's so many um, that need a touch from you. And especially for those that are uh, that have COVID, that are uh, struggling with the, the concepts of being safe, safety distancing, wearing masks, all of those things. We're trying to keep our family safe. We're going to keep our church family safe as well as our families at home and in the community. And Father, just be with us and, uh, and help, to, help to keep us uh, safe and um, productive in our society as best we can. And we pray for all of those who are out of work because of it. All of those who, uh, during this time of Thanksgiving and Christmas time coming up, it just seems like such a such a, a shame that there's so much trouble and turmoil and uh, unrest and social upheaval and all of those kind of things. But uh, Lord, we're, we're we're going to give you the thanks as we approach Thanksgiving for the, uh, the the what's happened in our past that we can be thankful for. There are so many things we can be thankful for, and you've had your hand in all of them. And we're going to be praying for the days to come. As we pray for one another, we lift each other up. As we pray this morning for this service and for our pastor as he shares and for our praise team as they share with us in music, we just pray, God, that uh, we would feel peace and comfort and warmth and love here in this building. And, uh, and, and Lord, we're going to honor you and dedicate the time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jared. Let's stand. We're going to sing a couple songs, and then I will do scripture reading, and we're going to do a couple more songs. If you feel you need to be seated during that time, feel free to sit down at any time.
much for scripture reading. I will be reading from Colossians 2, 6 to 15. Colossians 2, 6 through 15. Give you a minute to get there. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the element, elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. In him also you were, were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Having been buried with him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. And you who were dead in your trespasses and the un circumcision of your flesh God made alive together with him having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands this he set aside nailing it to the cross he disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him Thank you. May God add his blessing on the reading of his word. And we're going to sing a couple more songs. If you want to remain standing, you can. If you feel like you need to sing, go ahead.
morning. It's not that I don't want to shake your hands, but uh, I, I do want to be cautious uh, as we move forward. Uh, I know many churches are beginning to close again, going back to online, and that's something I do not want to uh, see us have to do as, uh, as a local church. And uh, So I will wave at you as you leave this morning, and appreciate you coming out and joining us uh, to worship the Lord together. Uh, take your Bibles, if you would, please. Uh, Jude chapter, not chapter 17, Jude 17 through 23. Uh, Jude 17 through 23. Uh, this morning we're going to be looking at contending with yourself. Uh, fighting for the faith that has been delivered to you. You know, the rise of false teachers in the first century, though a great nuisance and a great danger to the early church, uh, gave the church the opportunity to clarify key doctrines of the faith. Uh, that's what we have in the epistles. Uh, many of the epistles contain uh, very key doctrines of our faith in Christ. Uh, some of them are uh, cover the doctrine of God, that is theology, uh, Christ, Christology, uh, the Holy Spirit, pneumatology, uh, salvation, or soteriology, uh, the church, ecclesiology, and then end times, eschatology. It was through the work of the Holy Spirit that these epistles were written, again, to clarify key doctrines to our faith in Jesus Christ. Okay, it was necessary, it was so vital and so essential in the first century, but it is as well today, uh, that we uh, know these key doctrines that have been given to us uh, that help us in our walk with Christ. Uh, today, heresy continues to influence and impact not only the lost, not only the world, but even the people of God. And so we have to always have biblical glasses on as we look at the world around us, as we hear things from the world around us. Does it line up with Scripture? Is this exactly what God says in His Word? We need to know. Now Paul warns again in Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, and see to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit. According to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. And so we have that warning. That we must take that warning very seriously as the people of God. That we must know the truth. Now, how can we effectively contend for the faith? What do we do? Now, we're going to see in these following verses, uh, verses 17 through 23, that we need God's wisdom to be a healthy believer. That we need God's wisdom to be a healthy believer. To be able to contend for the faith, to be able to stand up for what we believe and, and why we believe it and know why we believe it. And the place to find this wisdom is the Word of God. And maybe in areas where Scripture is not so clear, that we look at James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives liberally. Okay, we are to ask in faith without what? Without doubting. Okay, and God will give us the wisdom that we need for daily choices. Maybe that we don't find in Scripture. And so we have the Word of God, and we have the wisdom of God from above, uh, which is of utmost value in our world in which we live. And so we need to crave the wisdom from above. Uh, Jude covers in these verses three areas as he speaks of a healthy believer who can contend effectively for the faith. The first one is this, remember the words of the Lord. The three R's this morning, remember the words of the Lord. Look at verse 17. But you must remember, beloved, 
the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They said to you, in the last time, there will be scoffers following their own ungodly passions. Now, first of all, we have the presence of apostates is certain. Two important truths here. The presence of apostates is certain. You know, Jude moves from these people, speaking of apostates, to his brothers and sisters in Christ. He says, you must remember the words of God. Now, God spoke through the apostles. In fact, we know that the Old Testament prophets prophesied the coming of apostates. And as Jude mentions here, the apostles prophesied of the coming of apostates. Jesus Christ himself prophesied of the coming of apostates. States. Matthew chapter 7, beginning in verse 15, Jesus warned us about these false teachers. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. They are in the world around us. In fact, they may even be in our midst. This morning. And that's why it is so essential that we remember the words of the Lord. They will come. They will come. Now Luke shared Paul's words in Acts chapter 20, verses 29 through 30. And I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after of the word of God. And they have deceived many with these lies. So many. Now we will look at those fruits uh, in a moment of these apostates. And there were many more prophetic warnings. And if anything, the presence of apostates in our world today is a very clear communication that God's word is trustworthy. It's trustworthy. And all of these predictions coming in true today. Now Jude then continues his portrait of an apostate. Now in his letter we have the portrait, uh, the, the portrait of apostates is clear. Now look again at verse 18. Uh, they said to you in the last time, and that is between the first coming of Christ and the second coming of Christ. In the last time, there will be scoffers following their own ungodly passions. It is these who cause divisions, worldly people devoid of the Spirit. So we have a portrait of an apostate. In fact, uh, this portrait takes us back to verse 4. And there's actually a, a chart in uh, in the notes there, a, a portrait of an apostate. Uh, Jude has uh, shared this portrait so that we can confidently identify false teachers. And we can do it with confidence. Now we have the ungodly, verse 4. We also have the morally perverted. They deny the deity of Christ. They Defile the flesh, verse 8. They blaspheme angels. They're dreamers of evil. Uh, verse 10, they are ignorant, self-destructive. Uh, verse 16, complainers, malcontents, self-seekers, arrogant, showing favoritism. Verse 18, scoffers. Scoffers are mockers of God's truth. They mock God's truth. Uh, Peter specifically addresses the fact that they mock uh, the uh, coming of Christ and his judgment. Uh, Jude says they make light of God's holiness and moral perfection, and with that they cause division, verse 19. They are worldly focused. Uh, they walk according to their own sinful lusts. And they are devoid of the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit does not indwell them. They are lost, as lost as can be. 
They need Jesus. And they need the hope that we have through Jesus Christ. And so Jude here lays the framework in which we can confidently identify those that would be against Jesus Christ. This is the portrait. And this is what you might say a portrait of a spiritual terrorist. A spiritual terrorist. In the next two verses, Jude gives believers a spiritual yet strategic game plan. Okay, how do we contend for the faith? How do we get really serious as believers in Christ? Well, he wants us to remain firm in the faith. He wants us to remain firm in the faith. And the best way to contend for the faith is to be firm in the faith. Now, the best way to identify error is to know what? You've got to know the truth. And that is our passion here at Order to Preach the Truth. And not to preach and teach what people want to hear or what our culture thinks people should hear. What does God say? That's what matters most. That's what's important. And so, remain firm in the faith. Look at verse 20. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith. Building up. It speaks to growing in Christ. Uh, building yourself up in your most holy faith. And this is actually progressive sanctification. Uh, it's, it's being in the word of God every day and, and craving it. It was either Jeremiah or Isaiah who said that uh, they, they crave the word of God more than daily food. Daily food. We must grow in Christ. Jesus Christ and his gospel, his word, are foundational for our growth in Christ. That we grow and mature as the gospel and God's word permeates our minds and our hearts. And then what happens is it overflows into daily living. It changes the way we live. It changes the way we think and the things we do. It changes everything. It changes our outlook on life. Now, even when things are not so good. And when we understand God's truth, we are strengthened. That we mature, we are built up in the body of Christ. And in our faith. You know, without God's word, there is no growth. Let me tell you this morning, Sunday morning is not enough for anyone. You, you could be the most knowledgeable person in the scriptures and know everything. But if you're not in the word of God each day, you can't grow. What's that little song, we, little chorus we sang when we were younger? Read your Bible, pray every day. We're going to look at that in a moment. And you'll what? Grow, grow, grow. Can you do that? Grow, grow, grow. <laughs> I can't do pretty tall, but... Uh, <laughs> try. <laughs> Growing in Jesus Christ. Taking the word of God and meditating on God's word. How many of us meditate? How many of us take in the word of God and, and we allow it to stir over and over again within us? And it just flows out. As we regurgitate what God has taught us in his word. Now, those key doctrines that are so necessary for our faith in Christ. Growing in Christ. And knowing God's truth inside out. Knowing what we believe in and why we believe it. Now let's build ourselves up in this most holy faith. And next, and praying in the Holy Spirit. Now what does that mean? Now, Jude is not referring to praying in tongues. Now, Paul shares these words in Ephesians 6, 18. Praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. 
Uh, praying in the Spirit is praying for God's will to be done. Not mine. That's praying in the Spirit. Now, God, I pray that your will would be done in this situation. Yeah, I'd like it to go this way. But you're in charge. Help me to yield to whatever direction, whatever happens. Your will be done. Uh, praying in the Spirit helps keep us on track. It, it gives perspective in life. It gives us perspective as we contend for and grow up in our faith. You know, the Holy Spirit indwells believers. He guides us. He convicts us. And yes, He even prays for us. He prays for us. Now, we need to always pray in the Holy Spirit. And when we pray in the Holy Spirit, all selfishness is out the door. Okay, it's not about me anymore. It's about God and about His perfect plan and perfect will in my life. So growing in this most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. You know, growing up in Christ is our edification. Now, praying in the Holy Spirit is our communion with God. And then Jude goes on to share these words. Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And so as we grow in our faith, as we pray in the Spirit, we wait for the return of Christ. And we long for the return of Christ. And we live His love in our world. Agape. A selfless, sacrificial love that is never about myself, but always about someone else. Waiting for the return of Jesus Christ. Now, it doesn't mean we sit around and do nothing. We continue to serve. We continue to give of ourselves as we long for that day when our eternal life will be, in essence, made a full reality. And right now we have that eternal life. That, that is knowing God, but it will be so much more when he returns. When we go to be with him for eternity. Now Paul shares these words in Philippians chapter 3, 20 and 21. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. What will he do? He will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body. By the power that enables him to subject all things to himself. Are you longing for that day as you grow in your faith? As you pray in the Holy Spirit? Are you waiting with anticipation for that day? I hope you are. We need to be. We need to be excited. Passionate. We need to grow in Christ. We need to pray in the Spirit. We need to anticipate His return, all while doing everything He has called us to do and doing it faithfully and doing it well. Contending for the faith. Knowing what we believe and why we believe it. And be willing to stand firm on God's Word. The last R is this. We need to reach out to the lost with the good news. Okay, remember the words of the Lord. Apostates are coming, they're here. Okay, we need to remain firm in our faith. We need to be growing and becoming more like Jesus Christ. We need to reach out to the lost with the good news. Look at verse 22. And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others show mercy with fear. Hating even the garment stained by the flesh. Now, what is Jude sharing with us? I think Jude wants us to understand this, that there is a different strategy that needs to be employed with different people when you reach them for Christ. Okay, different strategies are to be employed with different people. He says this, be gentle with those who are doubting. You know, be 
compassionate. Don't push them away. Don't be too hard on them. Okay? These, I believe, are people who have a lot of questions. And maybe they're thinking about biblically things, but they're unsure. And so they need some direction. And so we, we, we go to them with compassion. And we don't try to shove things down their throat. We pray and ask God for wisdom. And we, we share with them with gentleness. And next we have people that we need to be quick with. Be quick with those who are in danger. And you think about it, every unbeliever is in danger. Right? Every unbeliever is in danger. But this is someone who has gone much further. And maybe they are beginning to be deceived by some of the lies that are out there. And they're kind of heading in that direction. We need to be quick. Now these people are often those that need confrontation. Hey, stop! Those are all lies. Let me show you from God's word the truth. Don't be deceived. Now with these people, there is no time to waste. They are very close to being swept away by false teaching. Be quick with those who are in danger. And the third group of people, be careful with those who are defiled. And I believe... Jude is referring here to apostates. Those who are pretty much deceiving themselves, at the same time worshiping themselves, and making life all about themselves, and spreading lies about Scripture, about Christ. And these are those who are weighed in over their heads. And we must, as we reach out to them, use great caution. Why? Well, none of us are above temptation at all. And so someone like this, we have to be very, very careful around. Be cautious. But again, show mercy. Show mercy with fear. Now recognize that, you know what? I'm not above any of this. I mean, I'm saved. Always saved. But it doesn't mean I can't drift away and lose my testimony and give in in different areas. You need to be careful here. These people are good at deceiving. Good at deceiving. Now read Psalm chapter 1 this afternoon. A good place for us to start. A good reading. And those who are in Christ and without Christ. And the challenges that we face. Now, there is a picture, should be a false teaching bandwagon. You, you have the last guy. He's over there in kind of a real long walk. Okay, that, that's, that's the first person in our group. Be gentle with those who are doubting. Okay, that person has some questions. They're curious. And they're curious maybe on both sides. You know, what, what's this and, and what's this? And so we go to them with gentleness and we share the love of Jesus. We, we are a testimony to them. And we make them wonder, why are you so different? So the guys in front of him, the one climbing up and those that are running are the second group. Okay, they're, they're much closer. And they are more in danger of being deceived. And so we need to be quick to reach them for Jesus. You know, there, there's no time to mess around and, and just wait and, and let them continue in that direction. And we've got to come out in front of them and say, stop! Don't go there. This is the truth of Jesus Christ. Only he can say. He's your only hope. So be quick with those who are in danger. And then the third group are those that are already in the wagon. Okay, they have their instruments. So they're worshiping themselves. 
They have been blinded by Satan. They've been deceived. These are difficult people to preach. But they are not beyond God's grace, amen? Not at all. And God wants to use us to reach even those. But be careful. Be careful. Be, be cautious. Because if we are not careful, they will take us down with them. Great caution. I think we all need to understand this, though, as we reach out to the lost with the good news. Healthy believers understand that life is short. Time is limited. And heaven and hell are real. Yeah. Healthy believers understand that this life as we know it now is short. And the dash is very small. Time is limited for people to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And heaven and hell are very, very real. You know, hell is an uncomfortable, terrifying, but necessary doctrine of Scripture. It is not to be avoided. It is not to be left out of the gospel. It is a big part of the gospel. That people understand that they are sinners and on their way to hell. Eternal torment. You know, the doom of hell awaits with unending torment, but the warning of hell is a beautiful display of God's mercy right now. And the fact that he is a just and loving judge. And so he gives us the warning of hell in Scripture. Okay, hell is a key doctrine in God's Word. Key doctrine. And so many churches are leaving out the word hell. As though it doesn't exist. It does. It's real. I mean, right now it is called Hades. And one day Hades will be thrown into the lake of fire, Gehenna, hell. It's a real place. Hell reminds us that nothing in this present life is more important than a relationship with God. As we fight for a faith worth fighting for, we must also share with others what this faith is all about and how desperately they need Jesus. You know, all of us deserve the penalty of hell. But Jesus came, he lived a perfect life, he died a sinner's death, that we might be set free from eternity apart from the glory of God. That we might know God's forgiveness, that we might know his eternal acceptance and escape the, ex the eternal doom of the dark side forever. And that's what we want for other people, right? That's what God wants. He, he desires that all would come to a saving knowledge of himself. They'd be saved. That they would respond in faith. You know, this deliverance, this redemption is, gives us reason enough to celebrate. You know, reason enough to fight for this faith that has once been delivered and reason enough to share this faith with others. So again, there is a, uh, there is a fight for the faith, a struggle to preserve and pass on the truth that has been delivered to us. And spiritually healthy believers remember God's word. They remain firm in the faith, and they seek to reach every lost soul for Jesus. Now, it all begins with a personal relationship with Christ. It all starts as we start there. And as we grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, can we contend for our faith effectively? Okay, remember the words of the Lord. Remain firm in your faith. And reach the world for Jesus. Now that is what we have been called to do. How are you doing with that? Now all of us run into lost people every single day. And they're somewhere on that bandwagon. Whether they're walking behind or running behind or getting up in the wagon or already in the wagon. Now we have 
Let's share it with those around us. Let's know the Word of God inside and out so that we can be effective for Jesus. Father, we do thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your spirit that lives within us, that gives us guidance and direction. Father, help us to remember your words each and every day. Help us to remain firm in our faith through the study of your word and through living it out. And Father, help us to reach this world for Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand and we'll sing our closing song.